I'm here with Deborah Barnes, and she just gave an Ignite at Tech Camp about uh, note drawing, which are visual notes or kind of like sketch notes. And I just, she had her notebook, and I thought that I would uh, show you guys uh, what, what she's come up with. So um, say hi and just do a quick intro of yourself and tell us about what you told us a little bit ago during your Ignite. Hi, I'm Deborah Barnes. I teach third grade at Hudlow Elementary School in Tucson, Arizona, in TUSD. And my Ignite was about note drawing and not forgetting about the learners who need visual representation to make the connections with their learning to their art or to whatever you're talking about. So I use it with math and science and social studies, yeah. and I don't make linear notes. So you brought, your, you brought your, your notebook here. You said this is kind of a new one, so you don't have a yeah. lot of drawings in there. but. Um, Tell us what you, about what you've done here. So this was the AZK-12 Summer Math Institute in June. And um, <clears throat> the big thing about visual note drawing is to make sure that you border what you're talking about so that you separate things uh, so that it's easier to go back and look at it later. Um, we had a breakout session, so I kind of try to separate each of my conferences into separate areas. And we had a part where they... Um, said look at notes for more specific requirements so I had to put foot notes in so that's why I have feet so I try <laughs> to make it fun for me um, to be so much more fun to look back at your notes when it's like this than if it's just bullet points right yes and I can find stuff a lot faster I remember the picture so I'm able to go back and really be able to see what's going on and and how it works um, Mistakes are great. You don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not, you're not selling it. So it doesn't have to yeah. be um, absolutely fantastic. People don't have to have faces and, um, but, but bold colors uh, are good. Um, being able to link with arrows into certain places um, helps that information stand out, being able to make your fonts different sizes and using different color. And at the very end of this page, they started to talk about a really important math subject of vocabulary. And so I needed to connect that with my yellow brick road over here to the land of odd rows, question marks, keys, labels. Yeah. So, so you've done this for yourself. Um, you're also telling us about how your students use this. How, what's that like? It's a little bit challenging in third grade because they're perfectionists and they want their art to look really good, but I do try to talk to them and tell them about um, using art in their note taking. So I show them my notebook and we go through the, the steps of what makes a good notebook. So we look at font because that's also text feature is a skill for third graders to know. And we talk about it doesn't have to fill a whole page. This page has a lot of empty space on it. So you don't have to make it cluttered and full. Uh, we do a lot of our um, worksheets in a notebook so that they have something to take away with them it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a piece of paper that's turned in it can stay with them in their notebook and that kind of helps it make it a little bit more real for them how do you introduce this to students I start actually with math because math journals just seems to be a natural um, process for them and math is one of those subjects that a lot of kids are fearful of in the younger grades especially when we start getting into fractions in third grade so adding art to it makes it a little bit more fun and not as um, not as scary for them so that they can add some fun things because they might be an artist but not be a mathematician and so this helps them organize their yeah. thinking Somebody said they need a YouTube on this, and there's some great YouTube um, yes. how-tos. If you look up visual note-taking or sketch noting, there's some people who really um, lay it out and, and show you some of this. And that's probably what you would show students, too. Show your own, model it, and uh, give them some videos to watch to help them. Yes, there was a, um, a really neat poster that showed six different um, areas that you really wanted to target as far as font size and bullet points and, um, and, and yep, the connectors, the arrows, the question marks, the, the roads, making sure you have people in there so when you say think about this then you put a little face with a speech bubble and um, it also helps them with their project design later because they have that idea of um, putting speech bubbles on people or or other other things that will help with their learning yeah. uh, helps with evidence based as well yeah um, do you give extra credit for this or is this just part of what they do how they take notes 
I don't grade notes because notes are personal and notes are for them to be able to keep mm -hmm. their learning uh, relevant for them. So we do talk about making sure that it's not just mindless doodling, that it is purposeful. It does have um, a purpose in the class. It has direction. And to, then I can look and see if they're really paying attention. Uh, you can look at my notebook and know that I was really paying attention to the math lesson and the math lecture at the Math Institute because of how my notes were designed. And I can go back and tell you. Mm -hmm. So I do have, I do sit with kids with their journals and ask them to tell me some things that they remember from, from what we learned and have them go back through their notebook yeah. so that they keep it fresh. Yeah, one, I think he does middle school, his, his students won't take notes unless they're graded. For me, as, as a kid, I, I love to draw. And I loved how you set up your Ignite where you said that it's instead of, you know, just, just for fun, it's actually mindful drawing. It is mindful drawing because there is mindless doodling, yeah. and I do that too. <laughs> but, but there is mindful drawing, and, and so you have to set up the rules and the expectations. But I found that even with older kids, they really like art. And if you can attach something that maybe isn't an exciting topic to art, then they tend to, to enjoy it a little bit more. Well, this has been great. We've had, and it's always good to see you. And so let's give her lots of hearts. You've been getting hearts the whole time. People really like what you're saying. Um, and thanks for the examples and sharing your notes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was great. Love Tech Camp. Yeah. So have a great summer. Thank you. You too. <laughs> All right. Thanks uh, for joining us, and we'll see you later.